Well, brothers and sisters, friends, uh, boys and girls too, the times they are a-changing. Uh, we're here today to put a, a crack in a wall and uh, we're not going to stop until there's a hole in that wall, in fact, until the wall breaks down. The name of that wall is indifference, apathy, fear and hatred. We're not going to stop until that wall is broken down. In July of this year, a speaker in the Afghan parliament, the parliament of Afghanistan, Abdul Sattah Khawazi, announced that uh, Afghanis who become Christians should be executed in public and the Parliament House in Afghanistan should order the Attorney General and the intelligence agencies to e arrest those Afghanis who become Christians and to execute them. It is good in this way that he made a public statement that has drawn the world's attention to an aspect of Islamic law uh, that causes 1.5 billion people to be deprived of their fundamental human rights. I'm speaking of the Muslims of the world who are deprived of their fundamental human rights to choose their beliefs freely and without fear. Let me explain first some things about the apostasy law in Islam. The word apostasy is a translation of rida, which means rejecting or turning back. All schools of Islam agree that the penalty for a male apostate, that is someone who rejects Islam, is death. And for a female, the schools vary. Some say death and others say imprisonment until reconversion. And also there's the principle in Islamic law that if someone kills an apostate, they are not liable for that crime. This is a, a doctrine that is taught in the Quran and also in the Hadith, the traditions of Muhammad. I'm going to mention some of these because it's important to understand the depth and the conviction that is behind this. There is a verse in the Quran that says fitna or persecution is worse than slaughter. And another verse, in fact, twice it's repeated, fight them until there's no more fitna. In essence, Islam is saying in the Quran here uh, that uh, any kind of persecution that draws Muslims away from their faith is something that is not as bad as killing. Ibn Kathir, a famous commentator on the Quran, on this verse, Fitna is worse than slaughter, said that uh, those who commit disbelief in Allah and hindering others from his path, this is a much greater evil and more disastrous than killing. And this is given a traditional basis in Islam for killing rejectors of Islam, including apostates. Apostasy is particularly offensive in Islamic law because those who leave might take others with them. There are many traditions that have supported the principle of killing those who leave Islam. For example, Bukhari in his hadith said, whoever changes his religion, kill him, quoting Muhammad. Also, another tradition of Muhammad said the blood of a Muslim can't be shed except in three cases, and one of those is someone who's left Islam. There are numerous verses in the Quran that are cited by Islamic scholars to support this principle, such as Surah 88, verses 23 to 24, God will punish them with a mighty punishment. Surah 9, verse 12, if they violate their oaths after the covenant and torture you for their faith, fight yet the chiefs of unfaith. There are also many examples in the life of Muhammad where people that have left Islam were put to death, men and women. Sadly, Sharia law, that is the official code of Islam, is based on the Quran and the traditions and the life of Muhammad. And the modern period, although there has been some uh, modernization in the laws, the legal codes in some Islamic nations, we're in the middle of a Sharia revival and we're seeing many countries bringing back the old laws and secularization is being reversed. The Cairo Declaration of Human Rights in Islam declared that Sharia is the foundation of human rights in Muslim nations. And this is giving a basis for the reintroduction, the reaffirmation of the, of the law of apostasy, which says that whoever leaves Islam should be put to death. Not only does Islamic law determine that someone who leaves Islam should be killed, but it also declares that if someone leaves Islam, they lose many of their fundamental rights before the law. They lose the right to own property. They can't sell mortgage or gift property to others. They are unable to conduct business. They lose custody of their children. They become legally a non-person, unable to enter into any, uh, any financial or, or contractual relationship of any kind. Apostasy can be established by declaring that publicly that you have rejected Islam and adopted another faith. 
But the law schools also say that they could be, it could be established by, for example, questioning Muhammad's authority, or saying that you doubt the existence of God, or saying that something forbidden is lawful, or that something lawful is forbidden, or that people aren't obliged to follow the Sharia. In fact, even just making a joke about Muhammad could be counted as an example of apostasy and could lead to the death penalty. I explain this in some uh, detail just to emphasize the depth of the problem that, that, that Islamic law, which is based on these, on these foundations, applies in one degree or another throughout most of the Muslim world and countries as far spread as Malaysia and Sudan have this apostasy penalty for people that have left Islam. Also, nations have many other laws that are related to this apostasy penalty, such as uh, laws laws against uh, various uh, types of behavior such as contempt of religion or vilification of religion or the crime of having the conceit to be insolent to God or, or shaking the faith of a Muslim or the crime of having enmity against God or proselytizing or inciting hooliganism or evangelism. The laws are expressed in many different ways but the purpose in each case is to prevent people from exercising their fundamental human right to choose. Even expression of doubt is regarded as apostasy. One of the most famous cases, a Sudanese man, uh, uh, an intellectual called Mahmoud Muhammad Taha, was, uh, ex was uh, convicted of apostasy in, in 1985 and executed in Sudan. And one of his crimes was, as a Muslim, suggesting that Sharia in its complete status, as applied in Muhammad's life, didn't have the answer for the challenges of the 20th century. For that he was condemned to death. So Muslims who are not completely orthodox or, or who, who express doubts or want to reform their religion can can be a subject to this apostasy penalty. Also, those who reject Islam completely can, can be targeted. Nagla Al-Imam is a, a, a Christian in Egypt. About a year ago, she left Islam. She has been a human rights lawyer for quite some time, and she's adopted Christianity, her and her two children, as her faith. She was deregistered as a lawyer. She's unable to earn her living anymore. She was confined to her house. She was beaten up by someone from the official Egyptian security forces and threatened with worse treatment and she continued to speak out. She did speak out and she, she broadcast on television declaring her faith and singing a song saying she was ready to go through persecution for the sake of her faith in Christ. And after that she was kidnapped and beaten for several days and then thrown in the streets. She was taken into a hospital, a Christian hospital, but they were threatened uh, with, uh, with the, the, that someone would come in and kill her if they tried to care for her. So she's now in hiding and still broadcasting. A very brave and courageous woman. She's trained in Islamic law. She understands what she's doing. But she is determined to speak up and to express the confidence in the faith that she's found. So this apostasy law binds Muslims who want to be Muslims into darkness and, and lack of freedom. It also intimidates and harasses and kills people who've left Islam and adopted other faiths. It also harasses and intimidates people who just want to help others to have the freedom of choice. A few years ago, two Christian Sunday school teachers in Java were put into jail for a number of years because they ran a Christian ho a ho program for children and some Muslim children attended that program. So for that, they were put in jail for a few years. This is an issue in the West. One of my friends, a young man who was a Pakistani Muslim in, in the United Kingdom, he became a Christian in England. But he so feared for his life that he decided to emigrate to Australia. And he waited until he was in Melbourne here in Australia before he dared to tell his family back in England that he had become a Christian. It took him even a year after coming here before he had the courage to do it. This is a, an issue for, for Muslims in Australia who want to leave Islam. They too are intimidated. Their lives are threatened. Sometimes they are harassed. They're held against their will. It's an issue where the, 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 the media has been too silent for too long. We need people to speak out and speak up for people who've suffered. Many, many thousands, many thousands down the, down the centuries have suffered from this terrible law.